All right, men, welcome to the Front Row Dads podcast. I'm your host, John Broman. If you are new here and just dropping by, uh, we've got a great show for you today. I've got my buddy, Nate Palmer, with us. We're talking about eight reasons to become a fit dad, and we're going to get into some practical strategies today, some stories, and uh, as per typical on this show, it's going to be fun, and we're going to keep things flowing, and I'm, I'm really excited about this. Guys, if you are listening again for the first time, this is the show for family men with businesses, not businessmen with families. We're chasing the guys to build this tribe that are, are men of wisdom, but who are wise enough to know there's more to learn about life at home and guys that, uh, that value what we've deemed as our five pillars of front row dads, which uh, in no particular order here, because the order of importance is really up to the guy, but vibrant health, emotional mastery, thriving relationships, intentional parenting, and integrated living are our five pillars that we operate by. So we're going to get into the health topic today. As I said, my guest is Nate Palmer. Uh, I had a chance to um, spend some time with Nate at our last retreat. He was one of our special guests. He led the men uh, in not only uh, what we call our front row five, our FR5, which is a fitness test for our membership community, which was fantastic. Nate was also the winner of that. You didn't know I was going to say that, did you, Nate? <laughs> he was the winner of that. And at the end, by the way, it's a half mile sprint. And Nate was pushing it. He was gunning for it. Uh, he was going so hard. I had the whole thing on video. Dude, you were on the, I thought you were going to throw up. I thought you were literally like, you were heaving a little bit. Oh, you, I thought I was going to throw up too. You were pushing it so hard. And <laughs> you know, what's interesting is that in that moment, my respect for you grew because I was like, I know what it's like to when you're feeling uncomfortable, when you're physically uncomfortable, but yet you can still mentally, you can say, go, right? You can tell your body go. And uh, cause most people, if you're like, I'm going to throw up, you're like, this isn't worth it. I'm going to totally stop running. This is totally not worth it. But you, you, you did it. You won the front row five fitness competition, which is basically for anybody listening is five exercises in a timed sprint to see how fast you could do pull-ups and lunges and push-ups and, you know, stuff like that with a five, with a, with a half mile sprint at the end. Last thing I'll say about Nate Palmer, everybody, is that I read his book, Passport Fitness, and I thought this was very unique. It was, uh, it was, it was about his travels, your travels, Nate. And I thought that was like one of the stories that always sticks out is like, I, you were in some country traveling and like working out on the side of the road and there were these guys drinking beers watching you. And it just got me thinking about all the times I've done push-ups or yoga in an airport and, uh, <laughs> and people are just walking by and I'm like, hey, if anybody, you know, I have no, no shame in this game, right? Like I'm here to be fit. I don't care if people think I look like an idiot because uh, I think this looks like I'm doing what's important in life. But uh, you're somebody that you're creative, you're unique, you really are knowledgeable in the space. Reading that book really illuminated those ideas. Like you're, you're, you're a great writer because it's your voice. I, I read a couple things and I'm like, he didn't have a ghost writer do this. Like this is, <laughs> this is his sense of humor. Um, and, uh, I know you're working with lots of guys uh, remotely and in person to level up their fitness game. So welcome to the show, man. I'm glad that we're having this chat. Dude, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. Dude, this, this topic is so important and it's one that right now for me is, uh, it's really at the top of the list of things I'm focused on because, uh, I, I shared this with you and with our guys in the group that, um, about, was it last summer? Last summer, I was in Russia in July with my wife and our kids and visiting her family. And we did some blood work, which you can do fairly inexpensively over there. And the blood work came back and said, I had some challenges with my hemoglobin levels. And I had this, uh, what's called a fast, a fast erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which meant that my, my body was inflamed in some way. Like my body was not happy with me is basically what I found out through this blood work. And then that began a quest of trying to figure out how could I get back into optimal health? Because I, the more I started to pay attention to this, I was like, man, my low energy, um, it's, it's, it's affecting my work day. It's affecting my ability to be a great dad. It's affecting my sex life. It's affecting everything in my world. And, uh, and also, if I don't get this health thing dialed in, like I may not be around for a long time for my kids. I mean, I used to think I could run through brick walls and stay up all night and do whatever I wanted to do. But now I feel like I'm paying attention to my sleep. I'm paying attention to my workout routine. I'm trying and experimenting. I'm measuring a lot of this. And, and honestly, a lot of it has to do with things that you've helped me with. I mean, we did some coaching one-to-one -one, and that was all really helpful. So dude, that's what we're talking about today. We, you wrote a, a great article for the Front Row Dads website. We're going to get into eight strategies today. And 
dude, I'm, I'm passionate about this subject. So it's going to be good. Let's, let's just dig in and let's get started, man. Let's, let's first of all, though, before we actually, I'm going to take a back step. I take that back. We're not going to get started. Let okay. me just very quickly, the most important thing and, and why we're here is our families. So it would not be a great intro if I didn't ask you about yours. Tell us about who's at home at the Palmer household. So my wife, Lindsay, uh, she's, she's amazing, obviously. And then we have a one year and two, three month year old baby girl named Renna. And she's, she's absolutely hilarious. Everything she does is, I don't understand. I'm like, I, I can clap. I've been clapping for you know, several years, but when she does it, it's so cute. I'm just like, this is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, so uh, just us right now. And uh, we are actually traveling. We're hanging out with some friends in Seattle. We've been here about uh, almost four weeks and so that's been amazing to have some time to like get out of get out of our normal routine and start exploring and just be outside and hang out with each other. So it's been really fun. Now you used to travel a ton. Are you still on the road a good bit? Well, I mean, we've been we've been out of our home for four weeks. Um, we're li living in Seattle, but and then we're trying to keep a trying to keep traveling and doing other things. My wife actually just started a blog and a Instagram called Travel with a Tot where she's talking about how we take her and include her in our adventures and camping and whatever else definitely looks different. And we don't have any year long trips gallivanting throughout South America planned, but you know, who knows, who knows what the yeah. future holds. That's awesome, man. We just released a show, which I don't even know if you know this, but it was about the guys in our community that are living in RVs and traveling around like Shinpa and Petrini and guys like that. They're, what they're up to is really, really cool. And another guy who we invited to the show, uh, who's not part of our brotherhood, but somebody had said, hey, you got to meet this guy. He has uh, an eighth child on the way and he travels in an RV that's like thousand square feet or something like that. It's just wild. Whoa. Yeah, I got it. I, I really want to talk to Jason. I've I've seen him traveling around. It looks, it looks like an epic experience. He's got a great lifestyle, man. It's really cool. So, um, so let's talk about this because let's talk about the fitness stuff because a lot of our guys are traveling. You've done a good bit of it. A lot of the things that you teach and that you coach on are things that would help guys when they do have an active lifestyle. That's particularly who we're targeting here with this information. And so we got eight things we're gonna dig into if we have time. Uh, if we don't have time, guys, you'll find all these at frontrowdads.com. Uh, it's currently titled, Eight Reasons to Be a Fit Dad. After this interview, we might change that, who knows, but uh, you'll find it there under our recent posts. And you'll not only get the article, but this, uh, this episode, this interview, along with its transcript. So dude, number one, you, uh, I got to ask you, number one was less weight and more energy. It, why did you make that number one? Is it just coincidence or is it the most important thing? Is it the thing that people want the most is less weight and more energy? Yeah, I think, I mean, I Can think- you hear the boys in the background, by the way? Yeah, it sounds like they're having an amazing time. And in they're fact- having, my, kids, my kids and our friends are having an amazing time right now. If it's cool, I'd like to jump off this interview and join them whenever. Like, yeah, whenever exactly. Well, they're having a Nerf gun <laughs> right now, so you definitely would want to do that. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, man. All right. Let, man, in terms of the more energy, less weight and more energy. I feel like, okay, there's a reason that weight loss is such a prevalent thing as was all the supplements in our culture that we just start with weight loss. That's kind of like what people are, when you think, oh, I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to train for these things. Weight loss is kind of the number one thing that people think about. But what think they don't, body image, by the way, I think a lot of it is, you know, confidence, yeah. you know, like when you don't feel confident in your body, you don't like wake up being like, I like the way I look. That's a, that, that's, a, that's a mental talk that occupies a valuable bandwidth in your head. And so if you're a business owner or, and a family man and you're doing all these things outside of that, like you just don't have a ton of extra space in right. your head. So if that's, if that's taking up and occupying any of your mental energy, we need to get rid of that. So whatever, yeah. that, like whatever that takes to give you back that mental focus ability and just cognition, great. We need, like, we need to do those things. Like yeah. I was talking to um, – um, Joe Sanok. And one of the things he talks about in terms of getting rid of like getting rid of any sort of additional bandwidth that people put on themselves is mm -hmm. something as simple as laying out your clothes the night before or, or knowing exactly what the first tasks you're going to do. So yep. obviously, it's a very important thing. And I think that beyond just choosing your outfit or your breakfast in the morning, that is a, like a very negative thing that I have, like I've ha heard a lot of men tell me that this just bothers them. And yep. When you can't close the loop on something like that, it just takes up space. That and it's not it's not beneficial at all, right? Yep. Worrying about something like, like like that. So, 
I do think that weight loss like deserves a place at the front of the line here. But I think on top of that, what a lot of people don't tie this to until they get there is that the less weight they have, the less non-functional tissue, the more energy they have, the better their brain is functioning, the more like power they have to the things that they want in life, you know, yep. including your focus. So like you said before, you want to make sure you have the energy for your family, right? There's a quote that says, fatigue makes f cowards of all men. Yeah. And I, know, I know that when I'm at my worst, it's when I'm low energy. That's, yeah. when I'm, that's when I'm shortest with my wife. I have less patience for my daughter. I don't have any sort of like creative aspirations or ability to like sit down and do deep work. So I just know that if there's no, if there's no energy, there's just the life I want to live is, does not exist. You know, you, you wrote in the article, you said, um, when you start exercising every day, your body will create more energy to fuel the life that you've created. And, you know, it reminds me of this time when I was traveling um, to the UK to speak for Vitamix Corporation, John Berghoff had brought me in. And it was actually when I'd landed after a really long flight and I, I got to the hotel and he said, hey, buddy, you want to go for a run? And I said, hey, man, I'm exhausted. And uh, he looked at me and he said, that's exactly why we're going to go for a run. Um, because we're not running because you have energy, we're running to create energy. And I'll never forget that statement. I thought that was really brilliant. Um, I think that's the, that's the name of the game. Talk to us about the weight to height or waist to height ratios. I read that and I was like, all right, you got to tell me more. Yeah. So I think that uh, there's a, one of my, one of my favorite um, guys to follow He's a naturopath in out of Phoenix His name's Dr. Alan Christensen. He's a really smart guy, but he's been talking a lot about the waist to height ratios and how those are a more important metrics than your BMI for sure. And even your body weight. So like knowing your waist to height can be better in some cases than even knowing your body fat percentage, because it's a lot more indicative of any sort of health issues you're going to be having. So you can do this, you know, without any sort of fancy machinery either. You just measure because your waist. Where we store the, because of what type of fat is stored in the belly? Yeah, exactly. So underneath your, like when you pinch your belly and you're like, oh, I have these rolls or whatever, that's called subcutaneous fats below your skin. And in the grand scheme of things, John, that doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just one place that fat goes. The next level of that after that is called visceral fat that goes around your organs. Again, it's not terrible. Visceral fat is actually your body's way of protecting you against organ fat, which is that next level, which will literally kill you. So, but if we know how much visceral and organ fat you have by measuring that waste that like that, like your waist circumference, and then dividing that by, or dividing by your height, you can have a good idea of how healthy you are and where you should be in terms of like healthy, like early risk or significant risk for any sort of metabolic diseases or anything as bad as like fatty liver syndrome. Yeah. What if somebody's just like, yeah, but my body, uh, I have like love handles, you know, like genetically I have love handles or, you know, maybe you go, that's not where you're supposed to be measuring your waist anyway. I don't know. Like, is there, yeah, a you'll, you'll actually measure there? above that. So you want to yeah. measure like basically your belly button, maybe a hair above it, but kind it. of the narrowest portion of your waist. So right above the hips. So you're not really including the love handles or hip yep. bones in there. Yep. Got it. And there's a link. I think you put a link in the article so that you could go. Um, you connects to his work, right? And you can, yeah, and you can actually go just put it in. I mean, like you can go and put it in and like do your calculations there, or you could literally just measure your waist with like a, I, I literally did it with Apple iPod, like the iPod headphones. Yeah. I just measured the headphones when I was, when I was done with like a, just a standard tape measure and then just like divided that by my height in inches. Yeah. Got it. That's the, that's the easy way to do it. And what you want to be is for, you want to just be under 0.43 is yeah. the goal the ratio yep yeah that's, all right probably doesn't mean anything until you go do it but check it out very easy let's talk about sleep this is the second big idea uh i've been really digging this lately man focusing on sleep i got the aura ring i'm tracking it i'm seeing how much rem how much deep how much you know how, how my and by the way i if you would have asked me a week or two or like a couple months ago you'd have said hey how much sleep are you getting i probably would have told you that you know, I'm getting eight hours, seven to eight hours, but actually I'm laying in bed seven and a half hours, but I'm only sleeping about six, six and a half hours. And that was really eye opening to me. You know, that if you, it's telling me how much sleep I'm getting. Um, and it's been, uh, that information through the aura ring. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about this because this is, I, I'm fascinated by sleep. What tell us, what, what's your take on this? What should we be thinking about? Well, I think for a lot of guys in this space who are entrepreneurs, business owners, 
we just don't prioritize our sleep. Um, so I, a lot of guys I talk to kind of wear it as a badge of honor, like, oh, I'm sleeping only four hours a night. And I'm like, that is not, that's not like a healthy lifestyle and it's the wrong, it's the wrong way of thinking about this. So I know that you actually interviewed Matt Carter about, about yeah. a lot of this. And there's a, there's a link in the article to the podcast you and Matt did. Mm. So I think that's a, a good place to start. If you're ever wondering about like, are you sleeping enough? What are the, what are the things to work on there? Yep. But I think the main thing is just making sure you're getting like seven or more on a consistent basis. Because if, even if you're like the type of person who's like, Oh, I don't, I've never been able like a good sleeper. I'm like, man, you're human. You're, you're a good sleeper. That's just who, like, that's who you are until whatever's happened to you to make you think that only getting four or five hours of sleep a night is enough. Yep. But even it's crazy is that a lot of times scientists don't even know a lot about why we sleep still, but they do know that that's when we are recovering from, you know, if you are working out, that's when your muscles are breaking down those old cells that you, that are burned out and you're, yep replenishing them. You're going through a process called autophagy where you're eliminating old cells and creating new ones, as well as taking memories that you store in short-term storage during the day and, and bringing them into long-term storage and just helping you kind of go through the, your, like your daily thing, let your mind reset. Yep. So if you're not getting that, how can you be at your best? I feel like a lot of guys will even be like, well, I'm a, I'm like, I'm a high performer. What, like, what do I need to do more sleep for? Yeah. Or, you know, some guys will say like, well, I'm a, I'm a high performer. I'm doing X, Y, and Z in my business, but I'm 40 pounds overweight. And to that, I say, well, how much better could you be doing if you were sleeping a little bit more? And if you had a little bit more energy, like what would, what would your ceiling be then if yeah. you're already operating at this high of a level? And don't you like, does, don't you owe it to your family to, to see what that ceiling is? Don't you owe it to your business? Don't you owe it to like everyone around you to find out just exactly how productive and how like dominant you can be as a, as a, as a family man, as a business owner, as a, all these things. How about uh, supplements for sleeping better or devices or, you know, things like that? I've been experimenting with the chili pad, melatonin, CBD, all that stuff. What are your, what's your take? I think there's a couple, uh, a couple of different options here. I think that if you have a hard time falling asleep right off the bat, I think melatonin can be a great option. Um, I think that if you have a hard time staying asleep long-term, zinc and magnesium are both great. I also think as men, zinc and magnesium can be very beneficial just in general, especially if you're taking them right before bed because they help you optimize your hormone production overnight. And then if you have like kind of a restless brain, if you're, if you stay up late and like, are you thinking about things and just the whole day is just rushing through your head. I think that's when a CBD can be great. Or I even also like to include like a uh, inversion from like yoga in, a, in my bedtime practice. If I just had a lit day where I have had so much stuff going on, haven't really had a chance to properly process it. I like to sit and just chat in child's pose for three, four, five minutes or do, you know, a down facing dog or even a headstand, if, depending on how rowdy I'm feeling. But those things can help you kind of shift, shift your attention from being in your head to being back towards your breathing and just and falling asleep a lot easier. And I know we could do hours <laughs> just on the, th the sleep topic, right? Like there's so yeah. many things from, you know, blocking out the blue light and meditation. But, you know, what I would suggest to the guys is that if you're not tracking your sleep, that um, and if you're not paying attention to the quality of sleep that you're getting and, and using that as a metric that would be as as important as measuring like your profits in your business, um, I think that you'd be missing a huge opportunity to be productive. I, I've started as I get older now at 44, I recognize that I am being super productive when I'm sleeping. I'm building my body's working its butt off to heal itself. And like, it's just one of my elements of being productive. I just happen to not be conscious for most of it, which is great. It's the best kind of productivity. Yeah. Uh, which it's is called awesome. two for two for one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, thanks for it's the ultimate outsourcing. Like you, you turn off and let somebody else do the work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people who are smarter than you too. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I also think that like what you said about, it's like the ultimate, ultimate way of like being more productive. I think you're a hundred percent right. Especially since sleeping is something that we all do and it's free, you know? Yeah. So there's all these expensive and invasive solutions for sleeping more, more energy, all these things. But let's make sure we're hitting those big rocks of the things that we're already doing. You're yep. eating, you're sleeping, you're water on a daily basis, what you can control before you start looking into these other, other elements of like the supplementation, the thing like the cherries on top, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. Number three, you wrote less pain. 
Um, you also, you know, you led off here with like, hey, if you've ever been in a situation that where you've had chronic back pain, you know, maybe uh, confined to a wheelchair or crutches, something like that, your inability to move. If anybody's ever experienced body pain at a, at a severe level, it's debilitating. I mean, it, it's crushing. So let's talk about how, you know, let's talk about less pain. What, what's your take on this? That's exactly like you said, like the any time where you're like, you slam your thumb in a car door or something and you're like, man, I really remember when my thumb didn't hurt. Those were the days. Like this is how you feel if you have like low back pain, low back pain, upper back pain, neck pain. Those things are debilitating. They, you feel them at any movement, any turn, anytime you pick up your kid off the ground and they sap your energy. They just drain you because all day long you're experiencing these things. So if you're able to actually get up and move on a daily basis and st incorporate something like the daily sweat that we, we started, did starting in January. And I know we have still some people in the Front Row Dads group that are still on it, which is amazing. So anytime you have a chance to get out and move, amazing. And anytime you have a chance to you know, decrease your non-functional tissue, your body fat, that's going to allow your body to move in a better way. Greg Cook is, a, is the guy who came up with the, the um, it's called the FMS, the functional movement screen. His quote is first move well, then move often. Mm. And I really think that's an important thing because that's great. If you're able to like get some high quality movement, if you're able to move your body in a high quality way, then movement becomes the remedy and becomes like mm. the antidote for so many of these things that people experience in Western cultures, yep. the heart disease, the, like the low back pain, the like the inflammation, the atherosclerosis. That's a fun word. But <laughs> just just moving your body around, sweating on a daily basis is so good for you. And it's amazing that we have the ability to do that. So I just like to keep like help people bring it back to like the gratitude piece of being like, you're able to move and that rules. So do it. Yeah. It, you also wrote, which I thought was interesting, that for every pound you lose, you remove five pounds of pressure on your ankles from with every step that you take. Um, that's really fascinating. So got it. Less pain, very important. Let's get into stress, man. Talk to us about stress. So, yeah, so I think that, you know, we're, we're in this really crazy age right now, right? Where we don't have, we're not stressed about, you know, being eaten by that, by a tiger, even though you, I do see a tiger, like literally right behind you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Like there's no, there's no stress in our lives about, do will I eat today? Will I, am I being hunted? Do I need to like find a place to sleep tonight? You know, those, those macro stresses from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, all those things are already taken care of. So we go and find our stresses elsewhere by, you know, imagining things or worrying about things or cr like creating scenarios in our head or, you know, or like, you know, just taking the stress from work and just making that a part of us and so, and it's still stress. It's still really, it's still real in, in terms of the way our body deals with it. So any type of, any type of movement practice, any type of chance you get to expend energy and just go like move around, sweat, be a little bit more, I don't want to say feral, but you know, get back to your, get back to your roots of movement and activity. It gives you a great opportunity to recover from like the demands of our, of our stressful lives, you know? Yeah. And also, I think that for, for me and a lot of the, the people I work with, getting a chance to kind of detach from, from work or detach from the problems that we're having is a great way to so start solving those problems. Like, mm -hmm. you, like when you're sleeping, right, you're not really thinking about anything when you're driving, when you're showering. Uh, for a lot of people, when they're working out, when they're doing cardio, when they're exercising, you're not thinking about these, these problems that are causing you stress. Instead, you let your subconscious just go to work on solving these issues for you. Yeah. So I think that, I think that, you know, less stress, you know, from a movement practice or a daily sweat practice leads to things like better sleep, uh, we, happier mood, better sex, better relationships, less body fat. So do we know why, do we know why working out reduces, reduces stress? I mean, like I could guess, right? I could take a stab at it, but do we know the science behind why that actually happens? Um, I, what does it I, look like? I don't totally know if I can answer this completely appropriately. I bet there's a lot of different mechanisms at, at, at play. I do, we, do, we do know that working out releases endorphins, uh, oxytocin, and like serotonin, things like, things like that that are happy chemicals. So when you, when you go for a long run and you're feeling kind of elated afterwards, 
that's a stress relief right there just from the addition of positive chemicals and hormones into your system. So that can, that can definitely be, but I know there's gotta be something along the lines of being able to like release energy. And I don't know if that's from like a, like an actual like chi energy perspective or for there's more of a, you know, more of like a biological answer for it. But I know, I know I can say for pretty certain, with good certainty. Dude, I almost would, you know, I feel that when I'm, it, I have a team kickoff call every day uh, with my core staff and I usually am walking when this is happening. And I recognize that I feel like I'm a better leader when I'm walking and talking. Like I'm, my energy shifts. I, and if my energy shifts, then everybody's energy is going to shift because we're, we are contagious humans with energy, right? And mm-hmm. so um, I also think it's like different with my boys. Like if, you, like if you have behavioral challenges with your kids or you're having a tough time connecting or opening up or talking deeply, that you know, oftentimes the answer is that everything could be great except for the fact that maybe you need to do more of it on a walk, on a bike ride, in nature, right? When your body is moving in that way, you're just a, you, maybe it's like even with your wife, like if you're both sitting on a couch and you're both exhausted and tired, the words that come out of your mouth, the things, the filter that you're seeing the world through or, or actually, you know, communicating your feelings through that filter is it's gonna you're gonna deliver a different message but if you're walking and talking i always say if you're really fighting with your wife try getting naked rub yourself with coconut oil grab each other hug each other and then fight and see how long that lasts. <laughs> <laughs> see how long see how long that yeah, argument be right back i'm about to go to pick a fight yeah, that's right that's like the i'm gonna i'm gonna literally solve all the therapy problems in the world but with that one idea i like that one <laughs> yeah, that's right i mean but think about it like uh, no kidding like how uh, honestly how long would the fight go on for yeah not very long no um, so anyway but I, I think that's really important like i think that when even like when you think about stress it's not just how it's affecting you it's that your stress and how it's affecting your kids you know and I, like when i'm stressed out and i take it out on my wife then she immediately turns around and takes it out on the kids right like and same in whatever like if if my kids are mean to me it's like i kind of get that catch that energy and i can turn to my wife and sort of be extra mean to her because i'm angry at whatever my son just said to me right it just it, so having something that breaks a pattern like a workout or being you know active is uh, is critical yeah and i think like you said motion creates emotion yeah so when you're out moving around and like a sp- like or what like like Berghoff did when he when he brought you on a run when you were tired you know like the when you start moving your body has no choice but to respond with a positive outpouring of of chemicals and help you start like because your body's not going to let you just be like oh well we're kind of we're kind of running low on energy let's just let's just ruin this guy's life you know it's gonna it's gonna show up for you you know you have stored energy and, and different different ways of accessing it so your body loves you it wants you to it wants you to live and do your best so it's going to like if you start being like, I demand energy because I am moving now, it's going to bring that to you. Yeah. Does fitness affect uh, financial well-being? Is, do people make more money who are more fit? That's the science. It says it, like that's just what like the research shows us is that people who have a, like a, a BMI of under 25 make like I think it's like 13% more money than people who are over 30 BMI, which is the qual- qual- classified as obese. Hmm. Um, and why do and, you think that is? Do you think that society, uh, people will follow people more who are fit? Do you think that it has to do with energy levels? Does it like, what, what, why is it just an, is it an, an indicator of like their value system? I, what, what, where does this come from? Do you think? I think there's a lot behind that. I think that, you know, if you, if you have, less fat, you can be more energetic. You have the higher ceiling to be better at your, at your job. I think that as a society, we, we like, we're very tolerant of everyone except for people who are heavy. I think that's been proven time and time again. And I, I think that there's probably a, a confidence issue when you're not, when you don't feel your best, when you don't think you look good to go ahead and ask for the things that you want. It's harder, harder to say, Hey, like I, I am worthy. Give me a raise if you don't feel like you're worthy. So I think there's probably even more, more at play than just that, but I think there that's a start. Really is, right? <laughs> it's usually a hundred things. Um, all right. Number six was live longer, last longer reason to be fit. Um, this is, uh, I, I smile when I, when I read that because when we did our, 
our what we called our L4 fitness challenge we kicked off the year uh, at New Year's leading up to our spring retreat this was our live longer last longer challenge tell us why we titled it that <laughs> <laughs> well um, th there's a there's a study that just came out not too long ago talking about how um, dropping in like some really really small amount of weight I think it was like you know eight or nine pounds of of just like visceral fat massively reduced your risk of of getting cancer so like it was just this no-brainer like hey if you like this is something you just should do if you want to live longer the second thing about that is that as you as you lose weight as you're more active you increase your like your blood vessel and your like the blood access to extremities including your genitals which gives you better longer harder erections which will, you know, lead to lasting longer in the bedroom as well. So live longer in your life, last longer for your wife. Like that's a win-win, right? <laughs> that when, when we came up with that for the, for the challenge, I thought, no, this is really what it's about. And in fact, um, I'm going to give a little plug to the show that uh, as this show is released, just a few days earlier, we would have released the show with Kim and Nami. And she is a intimacy expert. She is a sex expert. She is, uh, she is very, very wise in this space and had a wonderful chat with her. But one of the things that she talked about was um, literally stamina for men. And, and, you know, that this being one of the most important ways to have an amazing sex life. And she said something like the average man can last literally minutes, right, before it's all over. And she was talking about that if there is one area of focus, one of them is stamina, just lasting longer. And she has techniques that she teaches with breath work and things like that. And certainly that makes a difference on, um, and she was talking about how men can have an orgasm without an ejaculation, right? And th that really caught my attention. Right, even like your head. I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually in like five minutes into that episode right now. I'm gonna finish yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really cool. Like she, what's great is that I've been listening to her stuff and I've been following her work, and it's made a difference. By the way, not just to me, but most importantly to Tatiana. Right, like what we're learning, and you know, when you when you take kind of the, oh, really, are we going to talk about that? Like, oh, this is uncomfortable. You take all that out of it and you go, look, this is an important subject, right? Like sex is really important. And if, if there is a domino effect here, like if you're fit and you are feeling good and have energy, there is no doubt that's going to affect your sex life. There is no doubt that a better sex life is going to improve your marriage. And if your marriage is stronger, there's no doubt you're going to be a better uh, parent and and family man and businessman for the record right like there you you know if, if if things are stressful at home it's definitely going to affect your work and if things are stressful at work it's definitely going to affect your family life look we're in an integrated society right you're you have integrated emotions like it's all connected here so I think this one is really really important you know actually I would even uh, if I were ranking these I might even say this would be number one like hey, look do the take care of yourself now so that you can walk your daughter down the aisle or you can see your son get married, right? And be there for, for, for them in these critical moments of their life later on, right? It's almost like you could argue it's extremely selfish to eat that junk food and ignore your health today because your kids are really counting on you to want to be there. And these are the things that you can control. Of course, sometimes life throws you uh, something that was out of your control. You know, you get diagnosed with some, uh, you know, uh, life-threatening illness that was not because you didn't go to the gym or eat healthy foods. It was because, you know, genetically you might've been predisposed or whatever it might be. So I understand, I say all this with great respect, but what I'm always talking about is doing what you can with what you have right? Making good decisions and making difficult decisions sometimes so that we can experience extraordinary later. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. But I like what you said about, you know, do what you can with what you've got, because I feel like, you know, obviously there's always extenuating circumstances and there's all, but there's, and there's also always excuses to, to make the wrong choice. So, yeah. you know, it's like, it's always all about doing the best you can, yep. you know, giving it, giving it hundred percent. Right. Especially when you consider that it's not just you, it's your kids, it's your wife, it's, it's the, your family unit and everyone around you that's being affected by your health and your confidence in your abilities. Yeah. Correct about that, man. The minute you decided to procreate, this is not just about you anymore, right? This is <laughs> uh, your, your decisions affect a lot of people. Um, 
and, and I suppose you could argue it never was all about you, right? It's always, your decisions are always affecting a lot of people, family or not. Uh, let's talk about confidence and then we'll wrap with number eight, which is showing your kids what's important. Tell us, what, what's your, what are your thoughts on confidence? Well, I think there's two things. I think you can have self-confidence in your body image. And I think that's important because like we talked about earlier, the bandwidth thing, and just feeling like get, getting out of your own head. But I also think that having confidence comes from following through on the things you, that you said you were going to do. So if you, if you've like the last five, 10 years have come, come and gone, January's come, you're like, I'm going to, this year is it. I'm going to like news resolution. I'm going to get it done. And then you don't like, you might not, might not feel like anything to you, but you leave that loop open in your brain and you don't close that off. How, like, how, does your self-respect and self-confidence diminish when you realize that you're a person who's not doing what they said they were going to do? Uh, Mark Crandall said something to the effect of the way to build self-esteem is by doing esteemable acts mm -hmm. by saying, I'm going to do this thing and then doing it and proving not just to anyone else, like, even though that's, that's cool, but proving to yourself that I do what I say I'm going to do. And therefore, I, I can have the confidence in knowing that if I say something, you can consider it done. And that's a powerful feeling. Yeah. That's like, that's, that's, it goes beyond self-confidence looking in the mirror and being like, I look good today. Although that's cool too. I remember uh, reading in The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, Ruiz. or Ruiz or something like that. And, uh, and I remember there was a part in that book, and, or maybe it was one of his additional books, The Mastery of Love or something like that. But he was teaching how there was this um, belief, there was this story that was told through generations upon generations about that inside all of us is like this stone that's like a triangle. And when you lie, uh, you're, this stone turns a little bit. And the first time it turns, it's a sharp triangle stone and it cuts you and it hurts. And you're like, oh, that didn't feel good. And, uh, but then what happens is the more that you lie, the more that you don't honor your word, the more you say you're going to do something and you don't fall through that keeps turning and turning and turning. And then the edges of that start to wear down and it doesn't quite hurt as much. And it just, it's easier and easier to lie to yourself or to lie to people and just not follow through with your word. Right. And that uh, we have to be careful with that. So that practice of integrity, do what you say you're going to do. Right. Or like that. I don't know who to credit for this one, but Mike McCarthy was telling me about the guy that has the, because I said I would brand. Um, he tells mm. a story, but that, that idea, like, because I said I would one of our dad, one of our front row dads, by the way, Scott Lowry, you know, years ago when we were at a fundraiser and somebody was like, Oh, if we raise a hundred grand, I'll get a front row tattoo. And he joined that commitment. And uh, he did. He got a front row tattoo. And his, he said, his son asked him, he said, why did you do that? And he said, because I said I would. Right. And that idea of just like I because I said my word is my bond. Right. And clearly there's more of an attachment to the charity, <laughs> this front row foundation tattoo. But um, but he said he would do it and he wanted to honor that. And I think that's that's really important. So confidence is king. Yeah. Uh, last one. And let's wrap on this one is showing your kids what's important. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, kids are always paying attention, right? To everything we do and say that's great and also not great, right? Um, and I think that a lot of times as parents, and, and I mean, you can tell me a little bit more because I'm kind of looking at looking at my future when I, when I look at you because <laughs> there's only one, right? But I don't know that I can just tell my kids, be like, you have to go do fitness. You have to be active. Go outside and run. Go do these things. But I know, like, and I know we talked about this, like, I don't tell my wife here, like, I want you to go train. I want you to go do goblet squats. I don't, I want, you should go do lunges now. You should do push-ups. That's not my place. Um, and that doesn't, that does not go over well. <laughs> so what I can do is I can demonstrate what, like, that this, I think, is an important aspect of not just my life, but also of everyone's life. And I'm going to show them that it's important by doing it and being consistent and making sure that that's a priority for me in my life and, and for them to not only to, to me to do it, but also for them to see. So um, I know, I loved what you had said in the front row dads group. Um, it was like a month or two ago where you talked about, I think it was tiger coming up and catching you reading and then being like, yo dad, can I read with you? And I just thought that was so dope to be like, to let your kids catch you in the act of doing something healthy and like, and just kind of outside of the, you know, the normal, the normal day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. So I, I really appreciated that. And that's kind of what that, why I thought this was a, uh, deserved to be a part of this. 
Yeah, man. It's, yeah, it is very different when you're like, hey, let's go work out, uh, although that's great. Or just if you're doing something and they stumble upon you doing it, um, it seems uh, a bit more like, oh, I, I you know, I, I just, uh, he's doing this anyway, but it's like, I try to make so that, they, that my kids catch me meditating or reading or working out or cooking or loving on mom or whatever it is. Just, you know, it's like as much as we need to catch our kids doing the right thing, we need to also let our kids catch us doing the right thing. Right. That's a that's a really important act. Um, hey, Nate, are, are, do you have a couple more minutes here before we wrap? Yeah, man. I know we're, uh, we're out of time, but I wanted to talk very quickly about the daily sweat because this is where a lot of this began for you and I. Um, and shout out to Alex Hayden, who introduced us, uh, a fellow front row dad. And you know he brought you to the table because he really admires a lot of the work that you've done. He was looking up to you in this space. Um, and, uh, and I'm so grateful that he did introduce you to Front Row Dads because we created this L4 Fitness Challenge. We, we, we issued a daily sweat right? Uh, a call to action just to get the guys to sweat every day. It didn't matter how you did it. You just broke a sweat. It could be anything. We're not going to get into that. It could be a couple minutes. It could be, you know, an endurance event, but it's just somehow, some way you got to break a sweat every day. It could be great sex. Who cares? Like just break a sweat every day, move your body in a way that, uh, that you can claim that, you know, and as a very, as an entry point here. So, and I think it's been really effective. We did it with our group. We have a number of guys who continue to do it. Shout out to Gabe and to Curtis and other mm -hmm. men like that who've been very consistent. And I honor that. Uh, in Nine the months. Yeah. So it's been incredible. And I think this is a, so just your take real quick on this daily sweat. Why is that important? Why did it work? Why has that made such a difference to so many guys? Well, I think that one thing that I loved about this is I was trying to make this really complicated and be like, do these exercises on this day, just because that's where my mind, my mind is generally like on exercise and structure. And you were like, no, 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 take it down a notch. Like, what if we just got these guys to sweat once a day? And I just thought that was so brilliant because it's like the lowest common denominator doesn't necessarily dictate how you do it. And it allows people to find things that they love. So like Curtis, he's been hitting the gym. He's literally gone daily for the last like, you know, nine months and four days now. Um, he's been getting into resistance training and his wife's been doing it too. And it's like, it's amazing to see his progress consistently month after month in the group. And I know some guys have been doing like different things, stand up paddle boarding, taking martial arts class, getting involved with their, with their kids and their, and like, I know Matt Storm's doing Taekwondo and, and all these other ways of doing it. But I think that it's the lowest common denominator of physical activity and movement that gets you the most bang for your buck. So like a lot of people will tell you, Oh, CrossFit's better or whatever's better. But I think that if you can find something you love doing and that gets you moving, gets you sweating, do that thing, man. That's awesome. All the time. So. I like it, man. This is really great. Well, Nate, um, you know, uh, I know guys can find you at, uh, it, it's, it's Nate training systems.com, which is N the number eight training systems.com. Uh, I would encourage people to check out your book passport fitness. And if they want to reach you any other way, how can they connect? Um, N the number eight training is my handle for most things. I'm also all over, all over Facebook. You can connect me in the front row dads Facebook group though. I love that place. It's just a great place to go chat about, be open about different things, get a, get some feedback from some other rad dudes. So guys, awesome. check that out if you're not in there. Hey, check out the article that will uh, accompany this po this audio at frontrowdads.com. We'll have uh, links that were mentioned during the show there. Uh, and of course, Nate's bio with his contact info. So if you want to find anything, frontrowdads.com. Guys, also, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, we'll ask a huge favor. Just write a quick review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It will help us to reach uh, more men with these critical messages so we can help them and uh, to have stronger marriages, stronger relationships with their kids, to live longer, to last longer in every sense of the word. And guys, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be really exciting for those of you who are joining us. We've got our retreat coming up October 23rd through the 25th uh, in San Diego, which I'm pumped about. And also we're going to be opening enrollment if you want to join a Front Row Dads membership uh, and join our live monthly calls and ask questions and get to know the guys. We have 120 men who are now in the brotherhood. We're probably going to be adding uh, 50 to 100 
100 men is my guess uh, this November. So if you would like to make sure you're getting notifications, make sure you're in the group on Facebook or that you're on our email list and we'll send out all those notifications. Nate, thank you again for being with us today. Really appreciate you, man. And uh, I'm excited to be building with you through life, man, especially focused on our health. And uh, it seems like whenever I talk with you, I'll learn something new. And I really appreciate that about you. Such a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. It was great. Enjoy the day, buddy. Will do.